Okay, so here we are, clarinet disassembly and reassembly. Um, again, this is going to be for those of you who are quite familiar and those of you who maybe are not so familiar with this process. Um, for those of you working on key names, I will use this exercise to emphasize learning key names as well. So we'll go through the key names. Um, let's start by taking a look uh, at the instrument, the clarinet. Clarinet body sections, we have the upper joint, the lower joint, and the barrel and the bell. And of course, we won't be spending too much time on the barrel and the bell because there's really not much to take off of those. So I'll just put those back in the case and we'll be done with them. Preference when I'm working on a clarinet is to start with the upper joint. And again, what you want to come up with is an assembly, disassembly procedure that works for you. Um, and stick with it and make it, uh, make it yours, make it solid, so that uh, every time you go to assemble, disassemble or assemble a clarinet, whether you're cleaning it or overhauling it or whatever the case may be, or doing body work on a wood clarinet, that you pretty much try to use the same procedure, the same steps, because it's that repetition that builds speed. Um, this is a Buffet E11. It's an intermediate line clarinet. I'm going to use this one as an example because uh, I happen to have it handy. Typically, when I start disassembling a clarinet, and again, I'm going to use my Allied screwdriver number four, I'll start making sure I have it turned the right direction. Yes, it's Monday morning when I'm doing this. And I will remove the register key. Now you know you got to call it a register key. It's not an octave key. Uh, for this exercise, when I remove a hinge rod, after I get it backed out of the post all the way, I will place the hinge rod back into the key and set it off to the side of my bench. I'm using my Freeze J22 SS stainless steel smooth jaw pliers. Um, because they won't mar the ends of the posts. Never go after a post or a key with dad pliers. You're better than that. Okay, so the next thing I'll do, since I'm right here, is I'll just simply slip over and remove the thumb ring key. Okay, easy. This pops right out of there. Don't have to worry about a spring because it doesn't have one. I'll roll it over since it's facing that direction and remove the throat G sharp key. Sometimes with small woodwinds, it's tempting to want to grab this screwdriver to use this, but the reality is if you ever run into a stuck screw with this screwdriver, you will destroy the blade. It doesn't give enough leverage. Short screwdrivers get you in too tight. This screw is, screwdriver is designed for adjustment screws, much like, like this G-sharp adjustment, adjustment screw on the clarinet here, so you probably don't want to use that one. The other feature of the Buffet uh, E11 is it has uh, blue tapered needle springs, so you want to be careful that you don't um, impale yourself on those. Uh, you will eventually build up enough callus that you won't do any damage. But in the meantime, remember, it's unprofessional to bleed on an instrument. The throat A key is held on, uh, held on by a hinge rod as well. And it has, instead of a round spring, it has a flat spring. Notice it has that flat leaf type spring. Throat A key on clarinet should have a flat uh, leaf spring. Uh, it's the best design. Now I'll turn it to its side and I'll remove the trill keys. Now you can basically remove all three hinge rods and take the trill keys off as a unit. Um, we have the E flat, B flat trill key, the F sharp trill key, uh, the B flat, and the C. I'm not going to be real dogmatic about the names of the trill keys other than the E flat, B flat. Uh, 
if I ever ask you the names of the keys and you tell me they're trill keys, I'll be really happy with that. Um, again, though, you want to learn the names of the keys so you can converse intelligently with your clients. And so you can come over and tell me if you're having a problem, what key you're having a problem with. Remember, if you're having a problem with a particular key and I ask you what it is, this key is not an acceptable answer. And I want to know the key name. So I'll pull the troll keys off and they're all on flat springs and I'll drop their hinge rods back into them. And you will notice that the B flat C troll keys are on a telescopic hinge. So you have two keys, one threaded into the other, supported by one hinge rod. That's really important to remember. Uh, LeBlanc products tend to have an individual, uh, have posts and hinge rod for each key, but most other clarinets, the, uh, the top two trills are, are supported by one hinge rod. Now I'm going to turn it over this way. And I'll remove the hinge rod for the EB upper ring key. And that's got a pivot point on it, so it supports the end of the DA, the, uh, the bridge key. And then we can remove that hinge rod. If you call this the bridge key around me, I'm a happy man. At least about that. Now I can flip it around and remove the C sharp, G sharp key. get it out all the way. Uh, I guess I did. C sharp, G sharp key, again with a round spring, and the E flat, B flat key. Okay, so I've disassembled the clarinet upper joint. At this point now, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the clarinet, uh, the up clarinet upper joint. Um, if you want to uh, do the, uh, the lower joint first, you can skip ahead in the video and come back to the reassembly, however you prefer to do this. Uh, this is the way I'm going to do it for presentation's sake. For those of you who are just starting it out, you may find it easier to keep one set, one joint's worth of keys on your bench at a time. But I'll encourage you as a professional technician that most times you, in fact, almost all the times you're going to disassemble a clarinet, you're going to be disassembling the entire instrument. Whether you're cleaning it or overhauling it or whatever the instance may be, get used to having all the keys of a clarinet on your bench at once. In fact, go ahead, throw them in a pile, mix them all up. All right, so let's go back to now reassembling the upper joint of the clarinet. We can start with the thumb, uh, with the register key. My tendency is not to, just because I like to kind of work with that last. Uh, so the first key that I'll put on is the E flat, B flat key. Do note on almost all clarinets, this has to be placed on before the C sharp, G sharp. So. If you put the C-sharp, G-sharp on and put all the left-hand keys and put everything on and try and put this on last, you're going to be taking most of that stuff back off so you can get it on. So start with the E-flat, B-flat key. Uh, better buffet clarinets. The hinge rod comes in from the top instead of the bottom, so you don't have to put it on before the C-sharp, G-sharp. But most clarinets, you'll have to put this on first. Uh, I loaded the spring as I put it on. It's very much a habit I've developed. I can line up the spring cradle with the spring, just slide it into place, and it's already hooked on. That's pretty important on a clarinet, too, because oftentimes there's no room to get your spring hook in there to hook up that spring after the key is installed. Okay, I've got those two on. Next, I'll go to the upper ring. And I'll just slide that in. And then I'll hook up my, my bridge key and tighten the hinge rod on the C 
or on the EB key. Sorry, had a flute moment there. Should be able to tighten that down all the way. Now, unfortunately, a lot of student instruments, this pivot rod is made too long and if you tighten it down all the way the key that it supports no longer functions so we do have to and take it and back it out just until that works and that's the way a headless pivot screw works and one of the reasons I wanted to use this clarinet for example is it does have headless pivot screws so we can talk about how to properly fit those and as a reminder or new information for some of you Pivot screws without a head are turned into the post until the key binds and then backed out until the key just begins to move, move smoothly. Headed pivot screws should always be tightened till snug. If they're tightened till snug and they don't fit, it's a problem with the pivot screw, the fit of the key, so, and it needs to be rectified. But otherwise, a, a headed pivot screw should be tightened in all the way. Now there's a couple of examples where a couple of manufacturers have made what looks like a headed pivot screw, but it's actually a headless pivot screw with a with an oversized head on it, and it functions like a headless pivot screw, and then you can tighten it in too tight. Those are exceptions. We'll talk about those as they arise. Okay, now from here I can go ahead. My preference is, and I will do this because this is the order I will assemble an instrument while I'm padding it, is I'll go ahead and I'll put on the two throat keys. I'll put on the A key, now, if I'm padding it, I will be leveling pads as I install it. So that gives me room to level the A key pad. And then I'll put on the throat G sharp pad. And a lot of people will put the trills on before the throat keys, but I find if I put the, uh, the throat keys on first, I have easier, way easier access to that uh, throat G sharp key to level the pad because I don't have the trill keys in the way. And that's just my preference. Okay, so now I have the throat keys on. I can flip it over. And what I'll do here is I'll reinstall just the top three trill keys first because they kind of interlace between each other. Remember when we took them off, it was easy to take all four off at a time. Not so easy to put all four back on at a time. So I'll put on my top tr three, top tree trill top three thrill keys, top three trill keys. Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm making this on a Monday. Um, and go ahead and tighten the screws, making sure that the flat springs are lined up into their proper saddles, uh, because if they're not, they'll tend to not function properly. Something else you want to do when dealing with flat spring screws is always take a second and make sure the screw that holds the spring in place is tight. Uh, if it's not, the key, the key may not function properly, or the spring may slip off to the side and interfere with another flat spring. So I've got those three in place. I can slide in the E flat, B flat. And you may notice I haven't put the thumb ring back on yet, because if I leave the thumb ring off, that gives me easy access to the F sharp trill to work on leveling that pad. If I have a key in the way, it can be done. It's just a little bit more awkward. And then I can go ahead and replace the thumb ring key. There's no spring on that, so I don't have to worry about loading up the spring. And then the register key goes back on. Remember, it's not an octave key. Clarinets do not overblow an octave, they overblow a twelfth. So it's a register key. Or a twelve key. Alright, so when I tighten down that last hinge rod, there's my clarinet upper joint completely reassembled. Okay. Now we'll move on to the lower joint. The lower joint is a little simple as in number of keys, but it has some other complications that add to it. 
Where I'll start typically with a clarinet is the uh, lower joint is the side levers, and I will remove those simultaneously. Remembering to always keep my screwdriver anchored while I'm using the screwdriver, and notice that I'm guiding it with my free thumb. If I slip, it's anchored, so it's not going to go very far. I can very thankfully say that every time I've stabbed myself with a screwdriver, it's been minor, and it hasn't even been that many times. So I'll set the side levers off to the side. That's pretty good. Now I'll start with the lower keys. And some people will take the right hand off first, but I like to take the lower keys off because that way when I'm working on the pivot screws here, I have the, the ring key over the lower tone hole here that's able to better protect that fragile chimney. So I'll start by removing the A-flat, E-flat key, which you know very well from your uh, BIR-123 pad installation class, and the F-C key. They are typically on one hinge rod. The crow's foot, this is called the crow's foot, is underneath the E-B and the F-sharp, C-sharp levers, and then the A-flat, E-flat, is sometimes it's necessary to get in there and unhook the spring a little bit to properly remove it. The A flat E flat pad is sprung shut. The F C is sprung open. Okay. Now I'll come around over the top here, and what I typically do is in most clarinets it's quite easy to remove the E B key just by loosening the top pivot screw and the F sharp C sharp key again just by backing out that top pivot screw okay and then I'll slide the pivot screw screw the screws back in there so I don't lose them Now I can remove the right hand keys. Uh, with uh, with this type of tapered head pivot screw, it's real easy to remove the keys by only taking the pivot screw out of one end. Be wary when you're dealing with the uh, Busher Bundy type cylindrical pivot pivot screw. If you're not careful pulling those out just by removing one end, you can bend them, and uh, it's not that it's not repairable. It just adds more time to the repair um and slows things down. Next key I'll take off of oh, the key I just took off was the right hand ring key. It's like the right hand of a flute, right hand of a saxophone, except it's one piece because we have open uh open finger holes. Next key I'll take off is the B F sharp key. Okay. Then I can turn it over, just tilt it over a little bit, and remove the FC side lever. And now the clarinet lower joint is disassembled. Okay. Now, from here, we're going to go right back to reassembling it. And there are some variations on this. Uh, some people start with the FC lever. Uh, that's fine. Uh, my tendency is to start with the BF sharp key because I typically think of the way I assemble, the way it's going to be easiest when I'm overhauling it, which again is going to mean I'm leveling pads as I'm putting them on. So I want the FC lever not in the way of the right hand pad when I'm leveling that. So since it goes underneath, the first key I start with is the BF sharp key. And again, just without even thinking about it, I hook up the spring as I put it on. Then I can put on the right hand key. And again, I have headless pivot screws. So I'll back the pivot screw out. Put the key in place. 
tighten the pivot screw down. Make sure the spring's hooked up. And see now the key doesn't work because the pivot screw is too tight. So what I need to do is I'll close that key and back out the pivot screw just until the key opens and make sure that it runs freely. That way I have no end play and I have no side play. And that's really important when I'm putting a pad on there that I know that the pad's going to hit the tone hole uh, the same in the same place every time that key is closed. And if you know this these steps already, you'll know that that's one of the five steps to installing a woodwind pad. Okay. Now that I've got that on, I'll go ahead and I'll put my FC lever on because if I start putting the lower keys on before the FC lever, some instruments you can weave it in there, but some you just plain can't. So that has to go on first. And I'll go ahead and I'll hook up this spring as I put it. <coughs> pardon me. As I put the key on, because in reality, once the key's on, there's no way I'm getting a spring hook in there to engage that spring. And again, headless tapered pivot screws. So I put it in till it binds and back it out just until it runs smoothly to make sure there's no end in side play. Okay? Everybody's good so far, right? Good. I want to back out the two pivot screws in this double post here so I can put um, reinstall my F sharp, C sharp, and my E B keys. And again, I want that ring key on first because it's protecting that fragile raised tone hole for my screwdriver blade. F sharp, C sharp key will go on there. And again, you have to engage the spring while you're placing the key onto the instrument because you'll never get a spring a hook in there. Okay. Until it binds, back it out till it's just until it's nice and smooth. Okay. Same with the EB key. And you can hook up that spring later, but it's real easy to just hook it up while you're there. In that case, you see I use the real sophisticated tool. Okay, got that running nice and smooth. Now, next thing we're going to put on is the FC and the A flat, E flat. These keys do have to go on simultaneously, except on some LeBlanc products where the A flat, E flat has its own set of posts and its own hinge rod. But in most of the clarinets you're going to see, uh, they're going to be on one hinge rod. So it's very important that we get them set up properly. Now the tendency is going to want to be to put the FC on, put the rod in, and put the EB on, and put the rod in the rest of the way. If you take that approach, you're not going to get the, the spring hooked up properly on the A flat, E flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the A flat, E flat key in place and engage the spring. And generally speaking, the spring is going to keep it from falling off the instrument. Okay. Then I'll take the FC key. And remember, that crow's foot has to go beneath these two spatulas. So I'll lace that under the F sharp, C sharp, and the E B spatula. And then I can drop that down into place. And when it's almost in place, I can engage its spring. Okay. Feel free to go back and watch this a couple of times. And I'll just kind of wiggle the key until I can get the hinge rod into it. And do the same with the A flat, E flat. And it's a hinge rod, and hinge rods go in all the way until they bottom out. So the FC key sprung open underneath the spatula is the F sharp, C sharp, and the EB key. A flat, E flat key sprung shut, operates independently. Now at this point you're going to notice there's quite a bit of lost motion here. For those of you who haven't figured this, this term out yet, this movement before the EB key touches the FC, the crow's foot, is called lost motion. 
Okay, that's not a problem right now because with this design of side lever, the side levers actually determine the key height of the EB key. So what I'll do is I'll reinstall the EB and the F sharp, C sharp side levers. Just drop them down in there. Get the hinge rods into them. How do you like that hammer action there? Always use the right tool for the job. And then screw those into place. And now the upper, the, excuse me, the lower joint is completely reassembled. Okay. Feel free to go back, rewatch any part of the video. Stop the video as you're watching. Wait to catch up with it. Um, and again, use this um, as a study aid. Thank you for your time.